My advice to entrepreneurs starting your career is the sooner that you get in touch with what your real mission and passion and goals are in the world, the sooner that you'll, you'll be on that path. Probably anything you do will be on the path. Um, you just don't know it. You'll, you'll look back and you'll say, oh, I didn't know it then. I thought I wanted this, but it helped me. I'd say if you have you know, the next Facebook idea, go do it. But, but if you don't, I, I would say put yourself in a learning environment. I, give yourself 10 years to start the company you want to start. Um, don't get caught up in incrementalism. I, I'd say figure out what your goals are and then never sacrifice against them. Because I just think life's too short to struggle. I just think that, I don't think there's any honor in spending five years struggling at a marginal startup. I, I'd say if you're going to do a startup, you have an idea that is your passion, do it and win or fail, depending on what winning means for you. Um, if you saw an opportunity to go join a startup, do a startup, and there's nothing wrong if you saw an opportunity to make money because money can give you the freedom to pursue your career as an entrepreneur. But I think it's seldom, people who go in it for money usually are disappointed. Um, it doesn't work out the way they thought. And that's kind of binary. I think if you go in it, if you approach it with humility and curiosity that starting out is a lot easier to do than later, um, I'd say figure out what you're passionate about and go find, uh, I, would, I would say find an entrepreneur or a company that you admire um, that you think is doing what you want at scale and is going to expose you to a lot. Um, and I'd say do that. There's, there's a lot of risk in just going and doing something on your own. There's no, not risk of failure, but risk of staying with it too long and not learning as fast as you could have. Great. So, I'm just laughing because like we have that we have the shortest microphone there and like the tallest people in that line. So I apologize for your your neck. You could go get acupuncture tomorrow at Zynga and massages. You know, I applied to work at Zynga this summer and something didn't work out. But um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, my question is, Zynga obviously obviously grew very quickly. Um, as an entrepreneur and CEO. How do you know when's the appropriate time to bring on additional management? How do you avoid waking up one day and saying, oh my gosh, I have way overextended myself to the point where it's going to hurt my company? Because I know as an as a entrepreneur, you are going to be very far extended, but how do you avoid hurting your company? How do you bring on the right people? That's just, it's such a great question. We clearly should have hired you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you I find that if your company is growing fast, um, you can find that you're overextended like every Monday. Because um, Sunday night I write down my priorities. I don't think anyone can pursue more than three in a week and I'll see that I have 10. And what I started the practice of doing is when I was overwhelmed, I would write down all the things I needed done and then I would turn to my team and try to get them to own it. And then when they're isn't enough left or they're not big enough, I knew I needed to level, I needed more people to level up. For me, I was kind of having nervous breakdowns. I mean, I was just, just massively overextended and I didn't even have time to interview people. And, I, and for me, one of my board members, Bing Gordon, um, took me out for breakfast and had me write down where I thought the company would be in six more months. And he said, how much extra bandwidth do you have now? And I said, none. And he said, what do you think you'll need then? And I said, double. And he said, OK, you've got to take 30% of your time right now and focus on recruiting and hiring bigger people. And, I, and you never have the time to do it. And it's always painful. And you will have existing people in jobs who will tell you they're going to quit. Um, but you know that they, are, they haven't scaled. And I think you, you have all these kind of scary bridges you have to cross, um, and I think you just get to a point where you just say, you just have to rip the Band-Aid and just, just keep crossing them and cross your fingers. 